Hi! Today we're talking about Union's first committee. Kind of. This is the timeline episode. So, we've had one of these before, namely talking about Humanity's Fall. This is continuing that, following the Union timeline at least. So, roughly around the Zero U section. Though, how to put it. We should cover a little bit of the Fall, or the tail end of it, to see what Union was made from. So, if you've seen that video, and if you haven't, might as well take a peek, but... The three great tragedies, which we briefly touched on in those, but here we're going to put a bit more depth. So from that, humanity collapsed, Dark Age on Cradle, or Earth, or the soul system in general. Last 5,000 years, humanity and civilizations build back up again. Don't even know their leftover that there was a civilization before, really. Then these things called the Massive Vaults were discovered, which had bits of technology, records, everything kept from the past to try and reboot civilization, which sent a cultural shockwave through, well, everyone at the time. It was definitive proof that they were not the first. <laughs> that there were many, many people before them, and many of their own people. Humanity in that sense, that had gone out to the stars, those that had died out, those that were standing on their bones, their ruins. Though, on top of that fear, which was the first great tragedy, and you know, that revelation, there was also a lot of weapons in there. Which leads to the second great tragedy, the Little Wars. Now, the Little Wars themselves, just to give, like, a rough perspective, think Age of Sail Empires managing to grab sci-fi tech <laughs> from these different vaults and scavenging it, not even knowing the exact workings of it. But Global War, the usual. You might now be seeing how long that lasts up on the timeline, but the reason it's called the Little Wars is what Union will do later on, which are definitely bigger. But that's the second great tragedy. So, you know, oh, we found out the world destroyed itself. How do we solve this? Another war. Isn't that grand? But it was out of the little wars themselves that we now finally hit Zero U, the founding of Union and the First Committee. Though it wasn't called the First Committee, it's just called the Central Committee. It will be called the First Committee when it's no longer the First. I mean, yes, obviously, but that's meant to sound ominous. Because of what SETCOM does. So, with Zero U, the Foundation Period. Essentially, the survivors of, again, the Little Wars, that uh, another large global conflict on an already delicate ecosystem, they got together, formed a rough government to look over all of Cradle, and decided to try and put all those things from the Massive Vaults to good use. Restoring the planet, trying to build up infrastructure, spreading all these different gifts across the world to everyone. Attempting to do what the vaults were meant for in the first place. To rebuild humanity. A humanity for perspective that had extra solar colonies and some other tech we're about to talk about. So yeah, they I fell far back. But anywho, we're coming up to the third great tragedy, which was with the spreading of tech, rebuilding of infrastructure, finding old long-range communications. Things that could connect up to satellites and long laser dish arrays. Which... Well, when they activated them, everything that was stored or the messages that were delayed but still coming in were distress calls. Calls for aid, calls of disaster, colony ships blowing up on transport, various bits of stations falling apart, falling into civil war, starvation, desperation, calls to just anyone to come and help. Met on the deaf ears of, well, an already dying Earth, this third great tragedy would spawn the need for moving out in one of Union's core mottos. Or ideals. Yes, the three pillars come along later and are roughly forming around this time, but truly, Truly, the early sentiment of Union, which all three of them can agree on, the different committees that is, is that Union could not bring their dead back home, but they could choke the stars with the living. That's a cool phrase. <laughs> In short, we need to make sure this doesn't happen ever again. The idea of humanity divided, falling apart, and preying on itself, that cannot happen. Which, generally a nice sentiment, will twist in certain directions later on. So, United Humanity, Union, on Cradle, which, right, during this process they also renamed Earth to Cradle, knowing that it was the starting point for humanity, and, you know, leaving even into modern times a real zeal over Cradle and the soul system, which only would become more evident during SETCOM and still in third com. But even in First Committee, what this led to was the idea that they were the inheritors of Earth. They were the inheritors of humanity. It was their task, their responsibility, to make sure all of humanity did not fight each other and were under one banner. 
You can kind of see where that might lead to some dangerous territory, but at the start at least it was going out to save colonies, find people, reinstitute these old programs and tech to, you know, better everything, repair the world, help feed people, just good things, you know, humanitarian efforts on an interstellar scale. scale. Good intentions, and you know what they say about those. Before anyone gets mad in the comments, this isn't talking about third com, this is first com. We know what first com turns into. <laughs> or at least, you're about to. Though, all those radio signals that bomb quote, the Union Space Program is announced. And a bit later, they get to Luna, activate the old colonies, stations up in orbit, satellite arrays, and the big one, Theseus Shipyard. A massive pre-fall ship construction yard on the moon. Though I guess individual building's not the right term for it, it's more of a complex, you know, surface and orbit. Big ship manufacturing, in short. This would be used to build some of the first ships within Union Space, and the big one was making the first near-light vessels, based off of tech found in the massive vaults. But what is important about that, just as a bit of a reminder, is that near-light wasn't something that pre-fall humanity had in large supply. A lot of the old colony ships were generational. Union had near-light ships. You know, still had to be in real space, fall under the speed of light, but could get close to it. <laughs> Which gave Union a technological edge early on over a lot of the colonies. There's then a brief segment, and I say brief, it's centuries, but a segment where Union just begins to fill out, rebuild, and reintegrate all of Sol's infrastructure. Which, while yes, they were behind some of the other interstellar powers, which we'll talk about, they still had everything from pre-fall humanity in its heart. Falling back in line again with that whole inheritor thing. The moons, stations, gravity slings, everything. So whereas some of these other colonies had to go, you know, building everything from scratch themselves, Union just kind of reactivated everything. Repopulated, reintegrated, rebuilt, reused, recycled. If recycling would then result in an entire solar system's worth of infrastructure. Eventually, Union makes contact with the Onic Acumen in Boundary Garden. The On are strange. Just put them as another interstellar power with some psionic BS. Well, that's later. <laughs> that's their own video. But in short, another interstellar power. Not just on one system, not just one planet, not a colony ship still drifting out there. A multi-system interstellar empire, already built up. Though shortly after that discovery of another large interstellar power, is the discovery of the Oracle Chorus on Mars. Specifically in Mars' polar caps, which house the five voices. Five bicameral minds which are, ooh, um, extremely advanced and powerful AI. Though they don't have their own consciousness, in fact, it's even described that their consciousness, well, th their lack of consciousness, is because they have a theorized blank space within their thought process, something that directs them. A figure which is a theoretical god for the AI. That's definitely not going to backfire. Or turn into anything else, you know. These are just five extremely powerful AI from pre-fall that can simulate multiple universes at the same time. How's that going to result in anything weird? Though using them in that simulation, Union begins its first expansion period. So, the first expansion period, which has a mix of things, namely colonization for one, whether it be finding old colonies or making new ones, or bumping into old ones with new. Still relying on near-light travel, essentially lock people up with stasis protocols so fewer generations needed and it's faster, and send them out. Hail Mary, just hope you eventually get contact back from them. When it came to the other colony worlds, however, it was part of reintegration, which is where Union's administration department had to come in, the UAD. How to put it, administration in a few ways. When it came to their own colonies, yes, it was just handling them in the vast interstellar empire that was beginning to form. But when it came to older colonies that were already populated, not all of them wanted to join willingly. A lot did because, oh hey, a massive interstellar infrastructure, you have near light vessels, which we don't. It's a bit of a good deal. Others begin to develop friction. Later in these discoveries is the Kara Confederation, not the Trade Baronies yet. But in all this time with the Kara Confederation, all these other colonies, and things with the Onic people within Boundary Garden not working out too well, things boil over into a bit of a Warhawk state as a lot of these issues just can't be solved with, hey, come in, join us. Union begins to look a lot more fractious. Not just in its colonies, but the fact that humanity itself is already divided. 
it's defined itself. It's not all those helpless colonies that were calling out centuries ago or millennia ago. These are other interstellar empires, other cultures, other peoples. But Union's goal is its namesake, unity. And some folks within Union think that a second committee is better than the first. As the first Karakin Union War and the first Distal War begin taking on, tons of other colonial fronts, the Union Navy stepping up a notch, first comm being dissolved, we're not jumping to SECCOM just yet. We're still in the first Expanse period. The first Expanse period is ended with something coming up in the Five Voices. Out of all the simulations, one of them has a flicker. And the best way to describe this flicker is to describe the Foundation series. Namely in the idea that if you can predict everything, you can't predict everything. There's always an element that can go awry and throw all of your projections off. And one of the voices had that flicker. So, next Union Timeline video is not going to be on SecCom. Well, still involved, but not SecCom entirety. It's going to be covering the Deimos event. Ra, the Siege of Mars, NHPs, all that. Because that's a real dense event. Equivalent to... I don't know, I'd even compare it to the Horus Heresy on just how much it changed what trajectory the setting was going in. Or humanity at large, really. Raw leaves a big impact. But before we go, I'd like to thank my patrons, which are the bicameral minds to my gal sim. So, <laughs> speaking of which, we're going to be covering a bit more in depth bicameral minds themselves, some of the details, how they actually work, so what might have happened to cause raw. But we'll get to that. Anywho, have a nice day, and if you're not, I hope you do.